So this is the the start of the um, <coughs> the parachute pattern. Usually do it in two stages. I'll uh, I'll do maybe four or five of these at a time. Leave the varnish to set, and then come back to to do stage two of them. So it's basically just a wing post and a tail at the moment. So fine olive thread right the way down the body to about there. Little bit of my favourite uh, Maxima fishing line for the tails, more durable than pheasant tail, and it seems to work from. The prototypes I've tied and fished with, it seems to do the job fine. I mean pheasant tail is what you should use, but this seems to work and it doesn't get bitten off with the first couple of fish. So, clamp that down, a few turns on it, and then bring that over so it forms a loop that I'm trapping in. That will never shift. Just leave them flying, we can trim them off after. And there we go, take that silk back down to maybe about two thirds of the way along the body. About there, and that's the position to tie your wing post in. So for the wing post we've got a little bit of lime antron here. I'm going to tie a little chunk of that in. Pinch and loop. Now I start going around that uh, with a, a figure of eight pattern, which means round the front, round the back, round the back again, and then round the front. Around the back, around the back. I'm trying to get that vertical, it's leaning back at the moment, so put a few more turns around the back, build up a bit of a sort of cone behind it to push it forward a bit. The more dressing I get behind it, the more I can pull it to where it should be. That's probably about right there. Okay, trim off the a bit of surplus below. Not completely, but to a fairly short stump. And then next thing I want is a bit of white antron, which is in my synthetic straw. This is not on a, a roll, it's a little, it's a sort of bundle of loose dubbing, so I'm just going to cut a bit off and form a sort of random length, stretch it out a bit. This basically just makes it visible to be honest in a fairly rough stream at some distance you can see you, you fly a mile off this white wing post it really uh, sticks out and I think it blends in nicely with that lime green to sort of approximate the colour of the real mayfly dun or sub amigo I should say the duns are a little bit uh, a little bit darker the amigos but I don't think the fish are that fussy. So quite a long, generous wing post. Can always be trimmed down if you think it should be shorter. I'm just using a little bit of teal. You could use uh, partridge. Partridge is probably better, but I haven't got any. I'm not too pedantic about me, me fly patterns having the exact right uh, materials. Put that on the front. And that just gives it a, a little bit of a, a sort of mottled look. Tie that in as well. Again, it's sloping back a bit, so just get some more loops behind. Pull it in. Just trim back that little bit of surplus there. That's it, I still leave a bit because. A little bit of buzz doesn't go amiss. And that's the wing post, so what I'll do there is tie that off. Like I say, I'll do several of these at a time. Uh, this is like the shell of the fly, basically, or the skeleton of the fly. All we do afterwards is uh, 
tie a body round the the rear part of the shank and a hackle round the wing post when it's uh, nice and rigid. And to get it rigid, what we do, trim that off. Basically, get a dollop of varnish or two or three round the bottom. Super glue would work as well. When this goes off hard, you've got a nice sort of solid stump there at the bottom to wrap your, your hackle round. Get plenty on. Don't be shy. And that will set solid into a nice firm wing post. We can wrap the hackle round. Which you'll see in stage two. And this is phase two. The, uh, the wing post is set solid with a bit of varnish around the base. So I've got a nice rigid stump to tie this on. I'm just going to start the thread again. Either side of the wing. Cut that tag off. And we'll tie a little bit of body on. I'm going to use some of this green, this olive green dobbin and mix it with a little bit of this darker sort of uh, dull green. Maybe, I would have said that's olive really, this, this one's more of a sort of lime olive. So we'll get some fibres of each of those together, tie that in, just behind the wing, I'm going to cut it, it's not going to be the same length as the tails, just maybe about there, give the impression of a a bit of a body. There we go. And trap that in, making sure the wing's clear. And now I can try a hackle. I'm going to see what one to me caps. They're not very good these, the moths have been at them. I want to reasonably stiff. Hackle. Um, and I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try two. Got a red furnace hackle there. Which you can trap in. Actually, twist that round. It wants to be sort of flat so that it comes round forms the parachute. But a mid-range size. So something like that. And I'll move that the other way around. A couple of twists of those and I've got a nice platform for the uh, fly to land on the water very gently and hopefully right way up every time. Let's cut that back and that. I'm going to spin them round together. Instead of going around the hook shank, it goes around the, the wing post. Like that. And you'll notice the fibres spreading out into like a fan. And those fibres are what keeps the, the fly afloat. Keeps it sitting on the surface film. Until it gets all struggling and wet when a, f a fish takes it. Can be a nuisance catching too many fish because you're changing flies all the time because they're getting sodden wet through. 
but nice problem to have. So that's our hackle. Turn that off. And what I'm going to do is just pull these forward for a bit while I get a couple of turns around the neck and do the tying off knot. And a little tying off tool. Give it maybe five, six turns. Three, four, five, six, and another one for good measure, seven. Since it's such a fine thread, pull that tight. And that's our, uh, our parachute mayfly. Trim that off, I'm just going to get a bit of varnish on that head. But varnish onto the tying off thread there at the end. And as usual, I'm just going to stick a tiny bit of this Maxima line through the eye just to keep the keep the varnish from setting in the eye. Most annoying thing when you get to the water side and find that you've actually blobbed over the eye with the varnish. And you're trying to poke it through with another fly or a hoop. Saves you the trouble if you do this. So that's our parachute mayfly. Okay, I hope that uh, item was useful for you. Um, very effective fly and quite easy to tie if you do it in two stages the same way I did. Uh, it looks like the mayfly hatch is starting to peter out now in my local river. Um, so the rest of them that I've got tied up are going to have to come in for next year. Uh, if you've liked the item, please uh, subscribe, comment and share. Above all else, comment. That's what I'm short of at the moment. And uh, to, by all means, take a look at some of the other content. Uh, there's a bit of something for everybody. A bit of course fishing, a bit of fly fishing fly tying and uh, I'm constantly trying to expand the content so uh, all good and uh, best of luck I'll see you next time bye